lost all my drive. You lost drive? Yeah, sure. Hey there guys, if you're having overheating issues with your 4x4, this could potentially be the right video for you. Let's see what we can do about it. Okay, so a couple of things to remember when it comes to overheating is you have to understand how the whole system sort of works. So first of all, you've got the internal combustion, which is the actual pistons and where the heating happens in there. And then from that, you've got all that heat that gets generated throughout the engine. Now, some of that hot air gets recirculated back through the engine, but it also runs through a cooling system, which helps control, control the heat for the whole engine. So there's a couple of different areas there that you can look at. So for instance, you could fit larger exhaust, which will help get rid of some of that heat, get it out of the engine and away from everything else. You could have a look at what the actual exhaust temperatures are. So how much strain is your engine running under? And then you can also lastly have a look at different coolant options. So that's bigger radiators and things like that. Okay, so in today's video, mostly what I'm gonna be looking at is how to help with airflow on the car, on the ute itself. Because like me, I'm sure a lot of you guys might have added a lot of things to it as well. And all of these things, they do congest the whole front end section of the actual ute itself. And that helps to prevent airflow actually being able to reach the radiators and all the vital components. So I've mostly focused on tidying up my whole front end area and we'll see what I've done and how it has actually helped me a little bit as well. Okay, solving my overheating problem, step one. So what I'm gonna try and do is, as I have restricted the airflow a little bit in the front here, the three main things I'm gonna focus on right now to start off with is I'm gonna move the number plate just to try and allow a bit more access for the airflow to come through here. Secondly, I am going to cut some holes through these, take out these center parts through these ventilations. And I'm gonna try and weld up some scoops or something to go across the bottom here, try and catch a bit of air and actually force that in there. Lastly, I'm thinking about potentially removing some of these fins that sit in between the actual grill at the front as well. Once again, just to try and free up a little bit more airflow there, see what we can achieve for that. First of all, with my grill, for instance, in between my actual grill fins, I used to have three different down fins. Now I've only got the one. I was able to remove two of those, just allowing a bit more air, but still giving my the front end of the unit a bit of protection there. Winch control box, they used to sit just nicely in front of here. I've moved that as far as I can behind one of my headlights. The number plate, that used to sit across the front here and cover half of the front section. So the number plate's been moved down. That'll get onto a hinge just to sit above the actual winch there, as well as the front view camera. So the front view camera has quite a big bracket that goes right the way across and hangs down. I've removed all of that and just moved the camera straight onto there. Apart from that, well, we've had some air horns just in the front here. I've removed those ones. They now sit underneath here. It actually works quite well. I get a lot of resonance from the sound in that whole cavity that's inside there. I've also, some of my winch cables. These winch cables all used to run inside here, blocking quite a lot of my airflow getting towards the radiator and the aircon condenser as well as my intercooler as well. Rewired that whole section and actually removed some of that stuff just to get it nice and smooth in there. Now, I've also actually added a couple of air scoops down the bottom here as well. So what I noticed is most of this air will just flow right over any of the vent holes that are down here. So what I've done is I've made up a couple of air scoops, welded those onto the bottom, and that'll actually grab that air and pull it back up into the engine. I got two things I did forget to mention. Um, I also did pull out the rubber strip as well as the padding on either side at the back of the actual bonnet. And the reason for that is just to allow some of the hot air to just be drawn back out of that section and actually be removed from the engine bay itself. On top of that, the bumper itself, the plastic bumper, I did cut that back a little bit more as I did find that from the front, it was actually hanging down and restricting airflow a little bit as well. So I cut that off and that was about it. Okay, so the big question is, um, did all that work that I put into it over two days, did that actually help? Well, yes and no. So for those of you that are interested, beforehand, my ute loaded to about 2.8 tons um, at 110 I was overheating on a 43 degree day. So three times that happened to me where I lost power and I had to pull over to the side of the road. Now, um, I have retried it and at 110 on a 46 degree day, I was actually able to hold my speed. 
Now my engine temperature for my coolant was reading around about 105 degrees, bear in mind that overheating temperature is 107. So I was, I was right on the borderline, but I was able to maintain that speed on a slightly warmer day as well. Um, as soon as I hit a hill though, unfortunately, without slowing down, yes, my car did overheat still. So there's still a bit more work that does need to go into that. So what I'm doing now is I'm monitoring the actual engine exhaust temperatures to see what's sort of happening there. Do I need to reduce the temperature before it gets to the coolant stage? Or do I actually need to work more on the coolant stage with bigger fans, bigger radiator and things like that? So yeah, stay tuned. Let's see what happens. Hopefully this has helped out you guys a little bit and I'll keep you guys up to date with any further progress that I make or anything else that I find that might help. But yeah, hopefully this helps you guys, gives you a couple of ideas for things you can do and use in your setup as well. So good luck.